every Sunday for the next couple of weeks in a series that I believe is going to redirect not your life, but the life of our church, our community, and at large, the entire world. Hey there, New Birth fam. I'm Diallo. And I'm Brittany. And we are so excited to bring you your weekly announcements. Mark your calendars for a significant spiritual milestone. Join us for baptism on Sunday, April 14th at 1130 a.m. in the vestibule. This is a profound moment of commitment and renewal, and we invite all who wish to take this step in their faith journey. Don't miss this special occasion to witness and celebrate new beginnings in Christ together. See you there. New Birth Family, as we embark on our Show Me a Sign Capital Campaign, we embrace a season of divine revelation. It's time to enhance the beauty of the signs around the exterior of our campus for the first time in over two decades, reflecting our inner transformation. We invite you to join us in sowing seeds that beautify our church grounds and in return, seek God's direction in your life for the upcoming quarter. With giving tiers from $100 to $5,000, we ask that you pray for guidance on your contribution level. Let's unite on April 21st to raise $250,000, honoring the land entrusted to us by the Lord. Together as we give, we anticipate the signs and wonders God will reveal in our midst. Attention students, New Birth is excited to announce that our scholarship applications for 2024 are now open from January 14th through April 22nd. After awarding $100,000 in scholarships to 32 graduates in 2023, we're committed to continuing our support for academic excellence. This is your chance to join the ranks of New Birth scholars who have attended prestigious universities like Morehouse, FAMU, Howard, Tuskegee, and more. Don't miss this opportunity to receive financial support for your college journey. Apply now at newbirth.org forward slash events. What's up, family? I am Broderick McBride, the Director for Emerging Generations here at New Birth Cathedral. Parents, I have some exciting news for you. Catapult Summer Academy 2024 is underway. If you have a child between the ages of 5 and 12 years of age and you are looking to find them something to do this summer, this is the summer experience you want to sign them up for. Parents, go over to our website now. Fill out the interest form and we will be following up with you first regarding our application process. We want to see you there. Take care. New Birth is seeking young leaders who desire to grow their interest and understanding by working behind the scenes of ministry. Depending upon the type of internship you're interested in, we offer a broad or concentrated exposure to ministry. You'll work with some of the best leaders while experiencing a team environment that encourages spiritual, personal, and professional growth. The application deadline is May 8th. You must be 18 years or older to apply and currently a college student in the Atlanta metro area. Go to our website to apply. You know the website. Join us on May 4th at 12 p.m. for a momentous occasion. The groundbreaking ceremony of our innovative mini home community, the Benison. I knew with over 250 acres, God got something else in mind. We have allocated 33 acres on our property, breaking ground on 150 mini houses right on our campus. Oh, come on, y'all ain't shouting right. Ben To all of our first time visitors, welcome. We hope you have an amazing time with us today. Remember, here at New Birth, our vision is simple. Equip, empower, engage. See, See you, you next, next week. week. Good morning, New Birth. Good morning, my name is Demetra Morgan and I am truly excited to welcome you to our Communion Sunday. Is anybody glad to be in the house of the Lord today? 
Amen. I don't know about you, but I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Today, we invite you to actively participate in our worship experience. So whether you feel like clapping or singing or dancing at the altar or at your seats or running up and down the aisles, just be sure to watch out for our media ministry. Please engage with us today. Remember, our vision at New Birth is to equip empower and engage and we hope that through this service you will be equipped with the word of inspiration empowered to share that word and message with others and engaged in a way that allows you to impact others so today we ask that you would join us we thank you for our virtual audience those of you who are joining us whether you are watching from milwaukee or fort lauderdale or san diego or even in decatur where is greater we ask that you would like comment and share and be sure to tag us on this worship experience today amen and my name is chris allman i have the pleasure to lead us into prayer this morning if you are able can you please just stand up on your feet as we go to the throne Father, we thank you on this day. We thank you for this is the day that you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Father, before we ask you for anything, we ask that you would forgive us of our sins, cleanse us of all wrongdoing right now in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we thank you that we're able to commune with you, Lord God, on this day. Right now in the name of Jesus, we pray for a covering for our pastor, Pastor Jamal Harrison Bryant. We ask that you would keep him, his family, his friends, and his loved ones. Oh God, we ask that you would touch new birth. Every member right now in the name of Jesus, anyone dealing with mental health issues, issues any sadness lord god you said in your word lord god that you would turn our mourning into dancing our sorrow into joy now god give us evidence of it in the name of jesus you said it in your word god that you, the mind of christ jesus should also be in us now god infuse us today with your mind infuse us with your peace now god let us feel you like never before in the mighty matchless name of jesus God send your peace now. God send your peace now. God send your peace. Reboko so doboko sadama. Send your peace now, Jesus. Hey, manana moko ramana se. Thank you, Jesus. Have your way in this place. Now, God, we call forth a great harvest of souls to come forth on today, Lord God. Great miracles, signs, and wonders to follow your word. In the name of Jesus, shut down in this place, Lord God. Do supernatural wonders. Healing bring forth right now. In the name of Jesus, as we partake in communion, bring forth your healing now, God. For you said it in your word that it is with your stripes we are healed. Now, God, let us never leave the same. Let us feel your anointing, your power, and your presence like never before. It's in the matchless name of Jesus. We pray and ask. Amen. 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 Do we have any April birthdays out there? Anybody celebrating a birthday? Amen. Show some love to those people celebrating birthdays. How about anniversaries? Anybody celebrating a wedding anniversary this month? April. Amen. God bless you. We are so excited that you are here today. New Birth, we ask that you would take out your cell phones right now. It is time for some ussies. Take out your cell phones. Go to that camera feature. Hit those two little arrows that make a little circle and point it towards yourself. And then get with the person next to you. And let's take a little ussy. You know, ussy is just like a selfie except it involves somebody else. So go ahead and take a ussy. For those of you watching at home, you can do this too if you've got somebody sitting next to you. Take an ussy and then we want you to post that ussy on your social media platforms. Be sure to tag New Birth and make sure you use the hashtag New Birth Now. So go ahead, take those ussies. We're watching. Amen. Come on. Thank you because 
with that in mind, we owe him everything we have this morning. Come on, do I have any worshipers in the room? Come on, that's it. He deserves our worship and our praise. All we want to do is make him smile. Come on, it's our desire to make him smile with our worship, with our praise, with the Lord, I love you, with the Lord, I praise you. Can you take a minute and do that? Come on, that's it, that's it. Hallelujah. Here's my worship, take joy in me, make it your dwelling place. I want to put a smile on your face. I'm present my heart to you. I present my life to you. Oh, 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 yeah. Come on, worship and lift your hands and sing. Here's my worship. Here's my worship. Take joy in it. Take joy in Make it your dwelling. To you. To you. Here's my worship. Here's my worship. Take, joy Take joy in it. In place. In place. I want to put a smile on your face. I present my heart to you. Here's my worship smile. Come on, you know it. Here is my Take joy and I pray. 
aren't you glad you serve a risen Savior? He's not dead, he is alive. And because he lives, we can face tomorrow because he lives, all of our fear is gone. David said, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. I'm not talking about your bills or your health or your family or your job. Would you just give God glory that you're alive? Come on, give God glory. Y'all don't sound like you glad to be alive. I say, give God glory if you're glad to be alive. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I am thankful our music ministry is ushering us into uh, the presence of our God. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. He didn't have to let me live, but he did. And because of that, I owe him a debt of thanksgiving. I don't want you to sit here today as if God owes you something. I want you to give God glory like you know you owe him all of the glory. Elbow your neighbor, tell him, pay off your debt. Pay off your debt. You owe him some praise for feeding you every day. Pay off your debt for a roof over your head. Pay off your debt. For clothing you in your right mind, pay off your debt. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, God is worthy. I dare to look down your row and say, I'm about to be debt free. Because I'm going to give God everything he is due. I owe him glory. I owe him a shout. I owe him a holler. I owe him a praise. Get joy when I think about Hallelujah. You may be seated. Somebody shout debt free, debt free. Hallelujah. I owe him all of it. Jesus paid a debt he didn't owe. And now we owe a debt that we cannot pay. I am so grateful to God. We give you all of the glory. We give you all of the praise. Would you just set the atmosphere for me just for 10 seconds? Would you lift up that hand and just give it to him? Come on, open up your mouth. Give it to him. Come on, we came for worship. We came to bless him. We came to magnify him. Lift up your hand. Give it to him. After all the stress you've been under, after all the trauma you have survived, after all the warfare you had to navigate, you owe him some worship. We owe him worship and we owe him praise. I'm thankful for all of you who are in this place on this day. Hallelujah. He's been so good. He's been so good. I better say it again. He's been so good. Hallelujah. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. Y'all act like you didn't come to have church. I don't know what you came to do, but I came to lift him up. I came to bless his name. I, I came to give him glory. I want to give God something because of all that what God has uh, given to me. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. <laughs> I got to give him something. I got to give him something. He brought me all through March. Brought me all through February. Brought me through all through January. You don't think there's a blessing for me in April? Do you know the hell I had to fight the first quarter of the year? You think God gonna leave me now? It's gotta be a blessing with my name on You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Ushers, partner with me. Let's give something to God. On this, the first Sunday 
this first Sunday of a brand new month, I want to give something to God. I owe him something. I am mindful of him. I have an attitude of gratitude. I have a spirit of thanksgiving. I got to give him something. Hallelujah. I dealt with enough selfish people in my life that I don't want to be one of them. I got to give God something. I'm going to challenge all of us on this the first Sunday in April. You may be seated. On this the first Sunday in April, I want to challenge all of us in the posture of giving Tuesday. Uh, we dedicated our brand new studio on our sanctu in our sanctuary on our campus, a million dollar uh, edifice uh, to which it is going to assist us in broadcasting the gospel of Jesus Christ literally around the world. Uh, at the conclusion of our group therapy on Tuesday, I prayed for all of our media department uh, just to let them know that the hand of God rests steadily on their life. Uh, they are uh, hard workers and they are under celebrated. Would you join me in helping me thank God for those who work in our media ministry? Come on, give God every person that's on the camera, every person that's working lights, every person that's on social media. Thank you uh, for helping us to uh, make God's name uh, great in the earth. Uh, and uh, as a consequence, coming out of the high of uh, Tuesday, uh, we ask uh, one of our media uh, liaisons to uh, help us uh, in this component of worship as we move towards giving. If you'll give your attention to the screen even now. Good morning, New Birth. My name is Devin Carter. For the last 14 years, I've had the absolute privilege of serving and doing ministry and creating content with Dr. Jamar Harrison Bryant. Me and my family is from Baltimore, and that's where we connected. That's where also my tithing journey started. I've had the privilege of serving at five different mega churches under awesome leadership. Everyone had the same principle, and that's tithing. But my tithing journey was not consistent. One month, you know, I could tell you, man, we generated about $42,000. And a month and a half later, how in the world is my account in the negative? I mean, gone. So I didn't want to call uh, Dr. Bryant because, you know, I didn't want him to say, Dad, what are you doing? I already gave you the principles. So I called Bishop William Murphy. And Bishop William Murphy read this scripture to me. And he said, Dad, tell me if this is what you are experiencing. I felt a hole in my pocket, in my book bag, and my car cup holder, and my bank account, it was all gone. I said, you know what? Next Tuesday, I'm traveling to Africa with Pastor, and we get in the service. The whole entire day, all I hear is the cash app noise. It sounds like coins hitting the account. And I look over the dock, I say, man, what you got going? Right? He said, man, I'm a tither, and Dev, I pray for daily bread. So I couldn't wait to offer in time in Africa. I said, I'm do the principal, Bishop. I'm going to do the principal, Dr. Bryant, because I'm looking for daily bread. I sold $100 in service. And then we get in the back and Prophet Prempe say, man, Devin, I want to bless you. I said, please. No, I want you to bless me. Let the Lord use you. And man, he gave me $1,000. So because I was obedient, I received the blessing that night. Dr. Bryant says, time on that money right now. Don't wait until you get back to the room. Do it right now, Dev. That's what I do. So Dr. Bryant just gave me the principle that I'm telling you guys to do that he shared with me in private. As soon as you get your money, no matter what it is, tithe on it right now. That's what I did. And the last thing is Dr. Bryant said, man, you should never ever go to a church where you could tell the pastor's car from the member's car. And I want you to know because I tithe, me and Pastor Bryant, we drive the same car. Blessings be upon you. Y'all give it up for Dale. It's not exactly the same, but it's, it's <laughs> it has the same intention, but I'm, <laughs> I'm grateful. How many of you all know you can't beat God's giving no matter how hard you try? I, uh, I, we prayed this prayer uh, in the Lord's Prayer. Give us this day our daily bread. How many of you want God to bless you daily, not bi-weekly? 
Y'all didn't hear what I just said. I want God to bless me daily, not bi-weekly. And so I operate out of this principle every day. I'm looking for God to bless me. Every day I'm looking for a door to be opened. Every day I want some tangible evidence uh, that God is doing something for my life. I want you to lift up that hand. I want you to have that same oil on your life. Lift up that hand. Every person pray this after me. Lord, give me daily bread. Every day I want a blessing. And every day I'm going to give you thanksgiving. If you believe it, come on, give God glory even now. Your economy can go up and down. Your finances can go up and down. Your check can go up and down. But God takes us from glory to glory. I want you to set the stage and set the standard for what you want your April to look like. Uh, there's the law of first mention. What happens first sets the precedent for what is going to happen for the rest of this month. Uh, if you're absent of an offering envelope, would you lift up that hand for me? If you'll lift up that hand. If you're all absent of an offering envelope, I want you to lift up that hand. Our male ushers are serving uh, on today. We want to make sure that you're not robbed of the privilege of giving. Those of you who are online, I want you to partner with us. Uh, those of you who are in the sanctuary right behind your seat is a QR code. You can scan it, and it'll take you directly to our giving. I'm holding in an in my hand an envelope from somebody who uh, worships and watches uh, with us from Anchorage, Alaska, uh, who sent in their tithe and said, I am a part of what's happening in Atlanta while I'm living in Alaska. Y'all ain't saying nothing. That's, that's the kind of God that we serve. I want 100% participation. I want everybody sowing. I want everybody tithing. I want everybody sharing because I'm believing that everybody is going to be blessed. Lift up that uh, phone if that's how you're giving through uh, Givelify, Zelle, or Pushpay, or Text to Give. Lift up your phone. You're giving by check. I want you to lift up that envelope. Uh, if you're living through, giving through uh, American U.S. currency, please lift that up. Amen. Thank you so very much. Repeat after me. Lord, thank you for what you did last year, for what you did last month, for what you did last week, for what you did yesterday. But the seed in my hand is an expectation of daily bread. In Jesus' name, amen. Bless the Lord. Our servant leaders, they're going to move amongst you to receive uh, your giving. Uh, if, uh, per chance, uh, you want to sow your seed for yourself, as is the culture and the custom of our house, uh, you are open and welcome to be able uh, to do that. Uh, how many of you all were blessed in our resurrection service last Sunday? Wasn't it amazing? Amen. I'm uh, grateful to God that 135 people accepted Jesus on last Sunday. And I'm believing that God is going to do even greater things on this day. A miracle is looking for you. Did y'all hear what I just said? I said a miracle is looking for you. An open door is getting ready uh, to happen for you. Some amazing things are getting ready to take place in your life. And I am excited about it. I'm excited about it. Can you all believe one month, one month from tomorrow on May the 8th, we're going to be breaking ground on our brand new mini homes. 150 mini houses are we going to erect to uh, the glory of God right on our campus. I want you to make sure that you are present and that you are accountable to it. Uh, while our music ministry is uh, preparing us, uh, I don't know if you realize how blessed we are, how spoiled we are. Uh, it was just uh, came out this week that our own uh, Jonathan Nelson uh, was named one of the 25 most influential gospel artists. Come on, y'all got to thank God for them. Isn't that amazing? 
Amen. We're, we're thankful that uh, we're able to claim him uh, as our own. I want you to participate as we go uh, directly into the word of the Lord. Uh, would you join me in electronic evangelism? I want you to partner with me. Whoever was the last person to text you, I want you to text them back and tell them to worship with you online right now. Uh, whoever's the last person that texts you, I want you to text them back uh, and tell them I'm in church. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Uh, I want you to worship with me for the next hour uh, at newbirth.org on our YouTube channel and our Facebook. Uh, you're able to partner and you are able uh, to worship. Our music ministry is going to prepare us for what God has to say. When the saints go to worship, that's when the King of Kings will come in. When the saints go up in praise, that's when the Spirit shall inhabit this place. When the saints come on one accord and begin to praise the Lord, then the King who is strong and mighty, oh, the King who is mighty.
Come on, let them in. Come on, let them in. As it you'll stand to your feet. As it you'll stand to your feet. Come on, let them in. He said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If you let me in, I'm going to come right in. Hallelujah. Uh, we're beginning a uh, brand new series on today on uh, driving on E. We'll be uh, doing over uh, the next four weeks uh, that uh, we are uh, under the banner as a church, New Birth is, that we will equip, empower, and engage. We will equip empower and engage we're going to equip the congregation we are going to empower the community and we are going to engage the culture uh, every Sunday and Tuesday for the next four weeks that's what I am uh, going to be unpacking so that you have a clear vision for the direction of the church what is the focus of the church and what is the intention of the church uh, the GPS does not work if you don't have a destination in mind. Amen. And I want you to know as a church that we're not just singing and shouting, but we are serving and uplifting. Uh, and there is, in fact, a vision that God has for uh, this ministry and has a vision uh, for you. I want you to be intentional uh, on your way out. Our ushers are going to uh, meet you there. I want you to be intentional that you are inviting somebody to church, particularly in the next four weeks, in the next four weeks, uh, so that they'll know that they're not just coming to any church, but they'll know what is the direction of their church. Uh, George Barner has given us uh, unnerving statistics. Here's what George Barner discovered. Eight out of ten of you in the room, eight out of ten of you in the room have never won a soul to Christ. Eight out of ten of you have never prayed with anybody the prayer of salvation. Eight out of ten of you, the people in your immediate neighborhood have no idea that you're saved. Uh, we've got to go back to becoming soul-winning churches. Amen. It's not about LED walls and cameras and smoke, uh, but is are we leading people to Jesus Christ? Uh, Desmond Tutu says that the real evidence of a church is the poor people in the community should vote every year should the church stay open. If the poorest people in the community don't see the value of that church, then the church should be closed. Uh, yesterday, 1,000 people in this community received free groceries. 1,000 people. Come on, you got to give God glory for that. Yesterday, something amazing happened. Uh, I never thought I'd be able to do it in all of my life, but yesterday we partnered with the IRS. I never thought uh, that day would happen. We did it on yesterday, and uh, almost 100 people had their taxes prepared for free uh, right on our campus. Come on, somebody give God glory uh, because we want to make sure that we equip we empower and we engage. I want you to come into covenant uh, that you will not miss a Sunday or a Tuesday, a Sunday or a Tuesday. I'm going to be preaching about it on Sundays, but I'm going to be teaching it uh, on Tuesdays. And so I need those of you who uh, went to public school and went on a field trip. If you ever went to public school and went on a field trip, turn to your neighbor and say, same seat, same seat. Uh, now, those of y'all who ain't been to public school, you ain't never been on that bus ride. Amen. Uh, but if you've been on that bus ride, then you know what same seat means. I want you to occupy the exact same seat that you're in right now. Uh, I want you uh, to have it. Would you lift up that hand? I want to pray for you, please. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Lord, you are my rock. You are my redeemer. I pray, dear Lord, you'll strengthen the hand that is lifted. That wherever there is weakness, you will change it for strength. I pray that this week they will subdue the enemy. 
that they will take authority over every area of their life. I pray for the hand that is lifted, that in the month of April, they'll lay hands on the sick and the sick will recover it all. If you are in agreement with that, would you give God glory for it even now? If you have your Bibles, would you uh, join me in Hebrews uh, chapter 13? Hebrews uh, chapter 13. Hebrews 13, verse 20 and 21. Hebrews 13, verse 20 and 21. I want all of us to read it together with uplifted voices. Hebrews 13, verse 20 and 21. Let's read together. Now may the God of peace. All right, y'all ain't there yet. It's on the screen. It's on the screen. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 20 and 21. Come on, let's read together. Now may the God of peace. Verse 21. I mean, we sound a mess. Let's, uh, Lord, that was bad. That was, all right. <laughs> Let's take it from the top. Welcome to choir rehearsal. Hebrews 13. Verse number 20. Come on, let's read together. Now may the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep. Verse 21. Equip you with everything good. Now may the God of peace, through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead, our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything. He's going to equip you with everything. Lay hands on yourself and declare out loud, equip me with everything. Equip me with everything good for doing his will. And may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to preach this morning using as a subject, you got to give me something to work with. You got to give me something to work with. In the blockbuster film, uh, Jerry Maguire the sports agent who bears the same name as the film is trying to work his, uh, trying to find work for his star player who's portrayed by Cuba Gooding Jr. and says to him plaintively, help me help you. He's trying to get him a good contract, but his attitude and behavior are getting in the way. When Nehemiah had the vision to rebuild the walls after he went to go survey what repairs were needed and necessary, he shortly thereafter assembled a team. But if he didn't have the equipment to give to them, then the vision would have been in vain. Spatula, granite, and cement had to have been on deck. Along with the right attitude, you also have to have the right tools. In order for new birth, in order for this church to get to the next level, it is incumbent upon us to make sure that we are equipped. The cries from the pew cannot be ignored by the pastor. Pastor, we see the vision. We know what it is that you're trying to do, but you got to give us something to work with. Matthew 4 and 19, he says to his disciples, come and I'll make you fishers of men. That's what Jesus said to the disciples. Come, I want to make you fishers of men. This is 
a complete shift, not just in their careers, but it is a shift in mindset. They have to go from uh, pulling on things that are underwater to attracting things that are above the ground. They have no nets. They have no poles. They have no bait. But they've got to figure out how do I become a fisher of humankind? The role, our responsibility as a church is to pull the people in, to pull people up, and to pull the power down. Let me say that again. Our responsibility is to pull people in, to pull people up, and to pull the power down. I want you to repeat after me. Repeat after me. Our responsibility. Come on, wake up. Our responsibility is to pull people in, to pull people up, and to pull the power down. One last time, wake up on me. Pull people in, pull people up, and pull the power down. We have to equip people. I want to say something to you. You'll never forget it after this day. I've got to say this to you. People who don't equip you don't care about you. Did I say that too fast? People who do not equip you don't care about you. Don't push me out the airplane if you're not sure whether the parachute works. Our schools have got to equip students for the fundamentals to navigate through this thing called life. We cannot, parents listen to me, you cannot allow the school to give your child a certificate for participation and attendance and they don't have any life skills in order for them to compete, in order for them to flourish and in order for them to function. Our children have got to be equipped. Parents, you have got to equip your children and not let your children feel entitled. I got to give you bad news. This world don't owe us anything. And unless you have been asleep, they have been pushing back the clock of the strides that have been made by our foreparents by trying to erase diversity, equity, and inclusion. They have taken away the board at the only HBCU in Tennessee. They are taking away black history in public schools. Malcolm X said, it's a poor person who allows your oppressor to give the education to the oppressed. You cannot wait for the school to give a black history program. You got to sit down with your children and tell them that there's a reason why we had to march and struggle and fight. It didn't happen through osmosis. It happened because some grandmother said, over my head, I hear music in the air. There's got to be a God somewhere. You got to equip your children so that they will know the nastiness of this nation. The Panthers tried to equip us on what to do when you are stopped by the police. Mega Evers tried to equip us on why voting is important is that there's got to be voter education, voter registration, and then get out the vote. Uh, Luke chapter 10 verse number 19 uh, the master said behold I have given you authority to tread on serpents to walk on scorpions all the power of the enemy shall not do anything to hurt you uh, because you are equipped for every level of spiritual warfare I need somebody to shout out loud I'm equipped for what's getting ready to happen I will not be taken by surprise. It don't matter what my supervisor says, what the manager says. It doesn't matter what emails come this week, what text message comes. I am equipped. When I was uh, pastoring in Baltimore before I came to serve you, 
Uh, several years ago, there was a retired pastor who uh, came to my church in Baltimore, Empowerment Temple. And uh, while I was pastoring there, I had three services on Sunday morning, one at 7.30, one at 9.30, one at 11.30. And uh, after every service, I would go to the back door, much as uh, like what I do here. And uh, there was an old retired pastor. His name was uh, Pastor John. He had to be in his 80s. And uh, on his way out the door, while it is that I'm saying, God bless you, while it is that I'm hugging people, telling people, see you next week, uh, that old retired pastor shook my hand, looked me in the eye, and he said to me what nobody had ever said to me in my life, and it almost broke me down to tears. He shook my hand and looked me in the eye and said to me, you are capable. And it, it dawned on me, nobody had ever said to me in my life, I am capable. In other words, I have what it takes. Some of you don't have never had anybody say it to you. So as your pastor, I want to say it to you. You are capable. I, I don't care what the school system says. I don't care what Fox News says. I don't care what the narrative is. I don't care what family you came out of. You are capable. I need you to alert the entire universe that the giant in you has just been awakened. Would you shout out loud, I am am capable because I am capable I am a cap I am capable and I am equipped scholars don't agree on who wrote the book of Hebrews but they all agree on Hebrews 13 and 21 Hebrews 13 and 21 uh, says that the Lord will equip you with everything you need to do his will. I think y'all read it too fast and you didn't understand the gravity of what that sentence suggests, uh, but I want to say it to you again. The Lord will equip you with everything you need to do his will. I need you to stretch out that hand and I need you to hear what your pastor was saying to you. The Lord is going to equip you that everything you were born to do, everything you dreamed of doing, everything you got an idea about, everything you wrote in your journal, everything that's on your prayer mantle. God said, if you can hear my voice in the month of April, I am going to equip you that whatever you were born to do, you will not die until you accomplish the will of God for your life. I came to kill a demon that has been trying to make you second guess your capacity, your ability, and your intelligence. I need somebody to shout out loud, I am equipped and I am capable. You are equipped and you are capable. I need you to spread a rumor. I need you to spread a rumor. Please, you got to help somebody. Would you just spread it down your row and tell them you are equipped and you are capable. Educators amongst us will tell you uh, that you are able to attain a thing not just by repeating it, but by modeling it, uh, but by also by demonstrating it. Uh, look at the lesson that Jesus imparted into the disciples. Uh, Jesus does something peculiar. Uh, he repeats a miracle. Uh, he uh, feeds the 5,000. He feeds the 5,000. Uh, and then he turns around and feeds 4,000. Y'all ain't going to believe it. Uh, in Matthew chapter 14, he feeds 5,000. And then one chapter later, in Matthew chapter 15, he feeds 4,000. It is what many biblicists would consider an unnecessary miracle. If you fed the 5,000, why one chapter later would you turn around and feed 4,000? Uh, because you have to understand, he was uh, equipping the disciples. Uh, he was equipping them for what it is that they were going to have to do through their life and do through their ministry. Uh, there are some uh, critical and pertinent things that take place in the difference between feeding the 5,000 and feeding the 4,000. 
The point was not about cuisine. The point was about being equipped. Uh, if you take a deeper dive, you will see uh, what has taken place because when Jesus feeds the 5,000, he is uh, feeding primarily Jews. When he feeds the 5,000, he is feeding Jews. But when he feeds the 4,000, one chapter later, it is not Jews, it is Gentiles. He is teaching them a lesson that the church has been derelict of holding on to, and that is, I am anointing you to work with people, here's your shout, you don't agree with. I, I am giving you what it takes so that you'll be able to serve people whose ideology is not the same as yours. Uh, because when God gives you an assignment, it is not for people who are in your clique. He's giving you an assignment who are outside of the realms of how you think, but that's how your Christ-like compassion comes forth. Folk don't understand that there are folk on your job who don't like you, but they are not going to break you because you are anointed for people who are not like you. You don't agree with Trumpsters, but they still got a soul. You, you ain't saying nothing. You got to bless those who don't think the same way as you do. That child may be transgender, but it's still your child. You got to love them and care for them and pray for them. Y'all ain't saying nothing. They are rude to you in the supermarket, but the light of Christ has got to be in you to understand the old me would have fought you in the parking lot, but I am anointed for people who don't think like me. New birth, woe unto us. If everybody on your road dresses like you, smells like you, and is degreed like you, if that is the case, it ain't a church, it's a country club but in the church a PhD needs to sit next to a GED a doctor should be sitting next to somebody who ain't got no health insurance the oil that is on your life is not for like minded people but when they see you walk like God they gonna say what manner of God is this that they can handle folk that are nasty to them that are mean to them that disrespect them. Somebody shout, I'm equipped for opposition. You are equipped. You are equipped for people who don't think like you. People who don't act like you. People who can't read like you. Your anointing is for the opposite. Say that again. Your anointing is for the opposite. I better say it one last time. Your anointing is for the opposite. And so they have sat up at night trying to figure out how they could break your spirit and steal your joy. But they don't understand you are fueling me for what I'm called to do. Every time I walk in, hear me, I'm speaking to you. And because I spoke to you, don't think I don't know what you tried to do to me. But the grace of God is on my life for the opposite. It's the first time. Watch this. First time is for Jews. The second time it is uh, for Gentiles. You may be seated. Um, when, um, uh, when he fed the 5,000, when he fed the 5,000, he has five loaves of bread. When he feeds the 5,000, Jesus has five loaves of bread. When Jesus feeds 5,000 people, he's got five loaves of bread. But when he feeds 4,000 people, y'all ain't gonna believe it, he's got seven loaves. All right, y'all be patient with me. I got a GED. When he got 5,000 people, he got five loaves of bread. But when he's got 4,000 people, he's got seven loaves of bread. I would think when I got more people, I'd have more bread. But when I got less people is when more bread shows up. God says, I got to show you how you are going to function when you ain't got enough to start with. I can't hear nobody. Some of you 
don't even understand you are God's runway model. I got a whole lot of bills, but I ain't got a whole lot of money. I got a whole lot of gifts, but I ain't got a whole lot of opportunity. But God says little becomes much when you place it in the master's hand. You want to know who's shouting right now? The people who are shouting right now are those who know my check ain't enough for this. But his grace is sufficient. He says, I am teaching you how to do more with less. Look, look, look at what your grandmother did. Your grandmother was raising seven and eight children with no child support. Y'all ain't saying nothing with no government back. Uh, but she was cooking a chicken on Sunday. And somehow on Wednesday, y'all still eating the same chicken because the supply would not run out. And there are those of you, I don't know how you sitting there. The car should have been repossessed. You should have filed bankruptcy. The house should have foreclosed. But you still standing here saying, look at me. I'm a testimony. I didn't make it on my own. I am going to show you how to do more with less. Be seated, please. I said, I'm going to show you how to do more with less. Look at your neighbor and say, he already showed me that lesson. I'm ready to graduate. He, hallelujah. He said, before I do it in you, I got to do it in your church. I got to show you how to do more with less when you are faithful over a few things. Hallelujah. God will help you do more with less. When I got here five years ago, I got here five years ago, we were four months behind on the mortgage. The county said they were going to turn our church to a convention center. The bank said we going to give back the loan. But God said, do you trust me? I said, God, I'm not sure the bills are coming in. The church is half empty. God said, do you trust me? I said, they say a new birth is dead and ain't nothing good going to come out of it. And God said, do you trust me? And five years later, we got houses getting ready to be built. A clinic that's about to open because God will show you. Be seated, please. It says, I'm going to show you how to do more. God, help me. I better stop right here. Because you know who ought to be shouting? Those who did well in the pandemic. You know who ought to be shouting? When you weren't sure how it was going to end up. When they said you weren't a necessary worker. But God said, I will look to the hills from which cometh my help. He said that when, uh, when they had 5,000, you may be seated. When they had 5,000, a little boy shows up. A little boy shows up with two fish and five loaves of bread. But when, uh, when they get to 4,000, you'll notice somebody who is uh, noticeably absent. In the miracle for 4,000, there is no little boy. And so God was modeling for them what happens to a church that doesn't have a youth ministry. God, help me in here. He said, you needed youth in the church because you need a fresh set of eyes and a new perspective. He said, because if you keep all the older people here, they'll only think about budget. God, help me. They said, Jesus is going to take a year for us to pay for this. But here comes a Gen Z who is a creative. They said, if y'all take my two fish and my five loaves of bread, we can handle all of this. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. The devil thinks 
he's going to keep this new generation out of the church. But God says, I'm raising up a generation. They may not do it like their grandmother did it, but they understand who Jesus is. Some of y'all ain't shouting because you don't believe God is able. But I need you to shout, why? Because I see my grandson say, I see my daughter walking in a purpose. I see my niece and nephew operating in the gift of the spirit. It can't be a healthy church if they no you. He see the police. Says, maybe when he's got four and there is no child, he's saying, I've got to perform a miracle for those who don't have children. Hallelujah. Because every major prophet in the Old Testament had difficulty giving birth. So he said, I got to touch the womb of those who have been waiting but have not seen the evidence. Y'all better get ready for baby strollers in the house. Uh, because there's getting ready to be a purpose for reproduction. You better get ready for what God is getting ready to do to open up shut down wombs. The enemy don't understand you meant it for evil. But God is going to work it out for your good. I'm going to give you another revelation to the text. The other revelation to the text is that they're at church. But the children don't come to church. Preach Jamal, I'm doing the best I can. God says, I got to do something because the enemy has been trying to separate parents from their children. That there has been a disconnect. But God said, when you give me glory today, watch how I reconcile families. Watch how I bring children back into the order of generational blessing. Y'all sitting there because you don't care about generational curses. But I speak over every shout that there's going to be a blessing in your bloodline down to the third and the fourth generation. Hallelujah. Give me something to work with. You may be seated. Hallelujah. The average Japanese family, the average Japanese family has a hundred year plan. The average Japanese family has a 100 year plan. The average black family can't uh, pull together a family reunion every two years. Cause we ain't got no plan. We mad about what color's the t-shirt. Cause we ain't got no plan. How about God said, do you know the plans that I have for you? How the plans for you to prosper? For your soul to be at peace. Hallelujah. I want to denounce to somebody who's in this room. I got to announce it. God got a plan for your bloodline. That your whole bloodline is going to traffic in the supernatural. Your bloodline is going to operate under the gift and the glory of God. You think it's just for you? God says, no, you are just shifting the culture for within your family. Those of y'all that want the blessing to stop with you, shout right there. But those of you that want it to go on for the next three generations, give God glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lay hands on yourself. Repeat after me. Poverty ran in my family until it ran into me. Come on, did y'all hear what I just said? Poverty ran into my family until it ran into me. Let me try it another way. Cancer ran in my family until cancer ran into me. Addiction ran into my family until it ran into me. Divorce ran in my family until divorce ran in me. If you believe you are going to redeem your family bloodline, I need you to give God glory like you know he's hate. may be seated says I want to equip you for what you get better to do I'm going to equip you for what you get better to walk into something amazing happens in the distinction between the miracle of feeding the 5,000 
and the miracle of the 4,000. There is a distinct difference uh, between the miracle of the 5,000 and the miracle of the 4,000. Pastor, what is that? Uh, the miracle of the 5,000, watch this. Uh, one of the disciples commandeer the young man, take the two fish, five loaves of bread. They hand it over to Jesus. Jesus lifts it up. He gives thanks. He blesses it. He breaks it, and he gives it away. That's what happens in the 5,000. But when he gets to the 4,000, watch this, he does two prayers. He does a prayer over the fish and then does a separate prayer over the bread. Thank y'all missed what just happened. Hallelujah. Prayer, here it is. You can pray once if you got enough. Hallelujah. But if you don't have enough, then your prayer life got to go to a whole nother level. Hallelujah. People that got their back up against the wall, ain't nobody got to beg them to pray. But I'll pray without ceasing. There's some of y'all, one prayer is good enough for you, good for you. But there are those of us here there that pray when we don't even realize we pray. We praying while we driving. We praying while we sleeping. We praying while we watching TV. We praying when the phone ring. We praying while we sitting at the desk. We got to keep on praying. If we are a church that only prays once, we're going to miss the move of God. But we have declared that this is the year of answered prayer. And because it is the year of answered prayer, he can only respond to the prayers we pray. Hallelujah. You got to stop waiting for somebody to pray for you. You got to learn how to pray for yourself. I know we done sang together today. We done shouted together. We done hollered together. But I want to unnerve the enemy in this moment. And I want to bombard the atmosphere with the sound of prayer. I want everybody, would you lift up that hand and open up your mouth? Come on, I need you to start praying right there. Hallelujah. A miracle is getting ready to happen. Breakthrough is getting ready to happen. Deliverance is getting ready to happen. Healing is getting ready to happen, but you got to pray. Hallelujah. Open up your mouth. I ain't hear nothing. Come on, touch right now, God. Move right now, God. Open the door right now, God. I need you to bless somebody's body right now, God. I need you to take care of somebody's finances right now, God. I need you to stop the eviction notice right now, God. I need you to go before them before they get to court, God. I need you to make sure that their child is able to stay focused and pay attention. Reduce the level of medication. Pull the pain out of their body. Reconcile marriages that are in this room. Do something for disjointed relationships with sons and with daughters. God, I'm calling on you because I know you can. I believe that you will. You've never failed. You are more than enough. You are an on-time God. Hallelujah. May be seated in the presence of the Lord. He's, he's a prayer answering God. Hallelujah. I said he's a prayer answering God. Hallelujah. My time was almost up, but I said he's a prayer answering God. I didn't mean to keep you this long, but he's a prayer answering God. You got other stuff you got to get out of here and go do, but he's a prayer answering God. I wanted this is going to be a test of your faith. This is going to be a test of your faith. This is a test of your faith. I want you to shout not based off of what I said. I want you to shout based off of the fact that you got enough faith that whatever I just prayed, God is getting ready to respond to it. Would you give God glory like you know it's getting ready to happen? Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. And so I, I, I got to do some house cleaning real quick. Hallelujah. I got to do some house cleaning at this. When you come to this church, hallelujah, it, it ain't for you to just have good music. You, you listen to Bobby Jones for that. Hallelujah. If you get into this church, it, it ain't no motivational speech. Uh, you, you, you can listen to some audio book for that. Hallelujah. When, when you come to this church, it ain't for production. 
Uh, you can watch Netflix for that. Uh, but when you come into New Birth Missionary Baptist Church, you got to come with a spirit of expectation that before I leave out of this building, God is going to give me what I need so I can handle what I got to fight for the rest of the week. I'm not coming to be entertained. I'm coming to be equipped. Jesus says to the disciples, Jesus says to the disciples after the crucifixion and after the resurrection, he says to them, I go away, but I leave you the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost, here it is, is your comforter. How the role and the responsibility of the Holy Ghost is not to make your eyes roll in the back of your head. How the Holy Ghost's job is not for you to foam around your mouth. It is not for you to lay out on the floor. Uh, but it's going to give you peace when you feel like you can't make it. He's going to give you strength. Here it is when you feel like you can't survive. He's going to cut down the rope when you thought about committing suicide. Hallelujah. Sometimes it's in a whirlwind. Sometimes it's in an earthquake. But sometimes the Holy Ghost is in a still small voice. Uh, Jesus said to the disciples what the 21st century church has failed to repeat. Here's what Jesus said. Jesus said greater things than these will you be able to do. Can you imagine what God thinks about you? That he wants you to perform more miracles than Jesus did. You keep thinking of yourself of being a beneficiary of miracles, but you don't see yourself as a conduit of miracle. God said, whatever you've been through over the last three years, I was preparing you to start creating miracle. Devil, if you can hear my voice, you should have killed me in a car wreck before I got here. But now that I got the word of God over my life, I am equipped. role of the pastor here it is the role of the pastor is to model the work of God not to be the exemplar hallelujah did you hear what I just said I'm supposed to model it I am not supposed to be the exception John Maxwell said there is no success without a successor how we got to train people to traffic in the supernatural. If you just coming in church waiting to be entertained, you're going to miss the move of God. But every Sunday that you walk out of here, you should be more equipped to tell the devil, I got a John Wayne anointing. Go ahead and make my day. Whatever you throw at me, I can take it. The devil must not know what he playing with. Because with everything you've been through, you should have died five years ago. But you're able to tell God, though you slay me, yet will I trust him. I don't care about your money or your car, but I want to send a message to the gates of hell. That when I shout in this church today, I'm equipped for bad news. I'm equipped for bad situation. I'm equipped for what the enemy didn't expect. I need every worshiper in this room that knows I never would have made it. But I'm stronger now. I'm better now. Give God glory like you are equipped. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray for you. Would you lift that hand? Nothing is going to throw you by surprise in this season. Nothing is going to break you down. Nothing is going to throw you off. You're equipped for it. Last three years of your life was preparing you for the unexpected. Just because it's unexpected doesn't mean you are unprepared. Lift that hand for me, please. God, equip me for the money I've been asking for. Equip me for the opportunities that I'm believing you for. Equip me for the attack that assuredly is coming my way. Equip me for what's going on in my house. 
Equip me for what the doctor says is going on in my body. Equip me for the changing, uh, changing temperature in this nation. God, I want to be equipped in the event that Trump is crazy enough to get reelected. I want to be equipped in the event that Iran responds to what's taking place in Israel. I want to be equipped in case the stock market crashes on tomorrow. I want to be equipped in the event that my child tells me something I never would have expected. God, equip me for it. Anoint my head with oil. Let my cup run over. I trust you for it. Thank you for equipping me for where you're getting ready to send me. Those of you who believe it, give God glory for it even now. I'm going to just stand to your feet. I um, Stand to your feet. Would you do that for me? Stand to your feet. Um, would you stand to your feet? Yeah. There was uh, a shooting that take, took place in Lebanon a couple of years ago. It was reported by uh, Associated Press. A shooting took place in uh, Lebanon about four years ago and um, a terrorist walked into a pub and just started shooting. 26 people were in the pub. It was the middle of the afternoon, in the middle of a bar, middle of the afternoon. 26 people were pronounced dead because that was the total number of people, including the bartender that was there, 26 people. All of them were pronounced dead. The police came in and started pulling bodies, putting them on gurneys, put them in black bags. And then uh, when they pulled up the 26th body, here it is, they found another man under that body. And he was alive. And they asked him, everybody in the room got killed. How did you make it? He said, the man you just pulled off of me, he was shot first. And, uh, and so I got under him. So when the terrorists came in and saw his blood, they thought it was mine. And so what saved me is I was covered by somebody else's blood. I don't know where you are in this room today. But I want you to know that you are in this place not because of your degrees, not because of your pedigree, not because of your lineage. You are covered because of somebody else's blood. That one day when I was lost, Jesus died on the cross. And I know it had to have been the blood that saved me. I don't know what you crawled out of to get to church this morning. I don't know what situation, I don't know what circumstance. But if you can hear my voice, what's keeping you alive is somebody else's blood. And I want you to know, I know who it is. His name is Jesus. He loved us so much that he, he thought it not robbery to die for sinners like you and me. I want to open the doors of the church and you don't have to wonder or question or try to figure out what you're going to get. If you join this church, you're going to be equipped. You're going to be empowered, and you're going to be engaged. I don't want you to have any shades of gray. When I leave out of this ministry, God is going to give me something to work with, something to deal with, something to carry, and I want to be a part of it. I want to open the doors of the church. I want to open the doors of the church for people who want to be equipped. People who want to be equipped. You, you ought not think it's strange that the Republicans are now moving afoot how to take education out of the prison system. God help me because they know if these black men ever get equipped to do something meaningful and significant in their life, they're not going to come back to this system. Wherever it is that you are, I don't want you singing and shouting and you don't know scripture. I don't want you singing and shouting and dancing and you don't know God for yourself. I need you to be equipped. Isn't it amazing? I got to show you this. I got to show you this. Give God some praise for this brother coming. (laughs) 
If I'm talking to you, I need you to meet me at this altar. Shout for these young ladies who are coming. God bless you. Listen. Listen to me. I want you to notice something after the pandemic that you probably didn't pay attention to. I wanted you to see, give God some praise for this sister that's coming. I want you to see something you didn't pay attention to. After the pandemic had begun to lift, after the pandemic began to lift, I want you to pay attention to it. Listen to me. When the pandemic began to lift, the mosque was in no rush to reopen. Listen to me. The synagogue was in no rush to reopen. It was only the church that rushed to reopen. Pastor, why is that? Because we were the only faith that did not teach disciples how to do individual worship. We tried to shame people into believing the only way you can get to God is in corporate worship. And nobody had an individual prayer life. But I'm telling you, you better set up an altar in your own house. Because there's some days you got to be able to get to God. There's some days you got to be able to touch him. And quite frankly, you can't wait till Sunday to hear God's voice. Come on, give God some praise for this sister who's coming. I want you to be equipped. I want you to be empowered. I want you to be engaged. Listen to me, the doors of the church are open. This is the kind of church where you can grow. This is the kind of church where you can flourish. This is the kind of church where God can get the glory out of your life. New birth, y'all still ain't shouting good enough. The Bible said that the angels are rejoicing. I want you to help me open the doors of the church. We're going back to becoming soul winning churches. Well, we're believing everybody is going to win somebody to God. Everybody is going to pull somebody into the fold. I want you to help me, please. Would you do a row check for me? Ask the people on your row, are they saved? Ask the people on your row, do they have a church home? Ask the people on your row, have they given their life over to God? I need y'all to shout for this beautiful family coming. Thank you, brother, for bringing your family. Come on, y'all got to shout right now. Thank you, sir. You're an incredible husband, incredible father. Come on, give God some praise. Look at black men leading. Listen, my time is almost fully elapsed, but I cannot leave at the risk of somebody not being saved. I can't leave without the risk of, with the risk of somebody not accepting Jesus as the Lord of their life. I need you to give God some praise for this mother bringing her daughters. If y'all don't shout for this strong brother coming down now. the Lord. All right. That somehow there, there was a miscommunication. I'm telling y'all in every aisle I got a black man leading. I can't believe y'all ain't gonna be excited about it. Come on y'all ought to shout when y'all shout for these young people coming. Listen to me. Listen to me, there's a miscommunication because uh, you think I'm supposed to do everything. Oh, y'all done missed the whole message. You are equipped to win people to Christ. You are equipped to make New Birth a better church. Come on, help me please, would you do me a favor? There's somebody in this room you haven't talk, spoken to today. You haven't talked to today, I need you to do it now. Give God some praise for this young lady coming. Bless the Lord. Y'all have made my heart happy and full on today. I am so grateful. Uh, New Birth, are you excited how our family is growing? How our family. 
ask that you all would just take one step up, one step up. Ordinarily, ordinarily, uh, our new members will send you straight out to the back. That's what we do ordinarily. I met with our leaders this morning and I said to our leaders, I want to do something different. Uh, is I don't want to, to send our new members and new converts to the back. I want them to stay at the altar to be the very first ones to receive Holy Communion. I, I, I wanted them to know that they are part of the family. Come on, y'all got to shout better than that. Hallelujah. And so we're getting ready to share in uh, communion together how deacons, our leaders are moving in appropriate form and fashion. How those of you who are online, I want you to partner with us even if uh, you live in Anchorage, Alaska. You can be a member of New Birth. You can live in Arizona. You can live in New Birth. I want you to be a part of it. Even if you live in Annapolis, Maryland, you can be a part of what God is doing at New Birth. Make sure uh, that you've got communion in your hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Draw me nearer, nearer than sin to a cross where thou hast died. Come on, draw me. Draw me. There's a real case in Texas. Y'all going to think I'm making it up. I want you to Google it when you go to breakfast this morning. It's a real tex a case in Texas of a man who uh, fell dead while uh, being in jail. Fell dead. In jail, hear this, serving a life sentence. They resuscitated him, brought him back to life. He is now petitioning the court that his life sentence should be over. True story. <laughs> it's a true story. <laughs> Said the old me die. <laughs> this a new me. Aren't you glad? <laughs> Aren't you glad the old you is dead? That while we were yet sinners. He died for us. As a week ago, all of us were um, hovering around the cross, thinking about the uh, soundtrack from our grandmothers. Were you there when they crucified our Lord? Sometimes it causes me to tremble. It's amazing that nobody in this room was alive 2,024 years ago. But when you think about your own life, at the foot of the cross, knowing that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. We are the only religion, the only faith in the world that can boast of a Savior that was born, who lived, who died, who rose again, and he's coming back. That ought to be enough for you to shout about right there. And so very carefully, those of you who are with us online, the wafers, the cup, are just symbols of his sacrifice. Run down to the kitchen. Get you a piece of toast. Amen. Get, break off a waffle, wherever it is that you are. I want you to get, get a potato chip if that's all you got. Amen. A pretzel will do. It just is symbolic of the representation of the body of Christ. I want you to lift up that wafer above your head and once it is above your head, watch this, right above your head, with that wafer above your head, would you break it? That's what was supposed to happen to your body last month. The enemy thought you were going to crumble under the pressure. Thought that he could break you. The psalmist said, watch this, that not a bone in his body would be broken. The centurion soldier went to go break the legs of Jesus because they thought it would expedite the death. But when they went to him, they couldn't do it, so they did it to the person next to him. That's why you got to pray for your circle of friends. Because whatever the enemy can't do to you, he'll do to your friend. 
I speak over every lifted hand that God will cover your body, that no organ in your body will break down this month. Not a bone in your body will be broken this month. That there will be no emergency visits and no ambulance calls this month because God is going to cover your body and keep you whole for the body that was broken for sinners like Jamal Harrison Bryan and Carla Stokes and Carriana Turner. Would you please take a knee? Ever so carefully pull back the second level of your receptacle. Those of you who are watching online, go get some orange juice. Go get some coffee. You driving, pull into Starbucks. Get something. <laughs> Story is told about 9-11. Uh, there was a man who was on his way to work. He was a stockbroker. He's on the train, headed down to uh, the World Trade Center. And while he was uh, on the train, headed to the World Trade Center, to start his day, 9-11, his nose started bleeding. His nose started bleeding. He looked down and his blood all over his shirt. He got off the train and got on another train going in the opposite direction to go back home. And when he got back home, he turned on the television and saw airplanes collided into his building. Watch this, on his floor. The newspaper came, the New York Times came and said, how do you think you were so lucky that you survived? He said, I ain't lucky. The only reason I survived is because I got blood on me. You got to know that no matter what happens this week, no matter what happens this month, no matter what takes place this year, what's keeping you alive, you got blood on you. Because of the blood that was shed for sinners like you and I, would you please take and drink? We've renewed our covenant that we believe the grace of God is going to remain buoyant in our lives over the next 30 days. I need you to do me a favor. Would you embrace three people around you and tell them you are equipped? You are capable. Those of you who are at the altar. Yes. Those of you who are at the altar, if you'll follow us this way. Those of you at the altar, if you'll follow us this way. Thank you. Those of you at the altar, yes, if you'll follow us this way, thank you. If you'll follow us this way. Come on, there is power. Hey, wonder. There is power. than enough. I give God glory. I give God praise and I'm grateful for uh, your lavish selflessness. Uh, last week uh, I asked you, I stretched your faith on Resurrection Sunday that we'd be a blessing uh, to uh, those who died on the Francis Scott Key Bridge uh, in Baltimore. And I want to thank you, even those of you who are online. I, I am grateful unto God, and I want you robustly uh, to give God glory for your neighbor in one moment uh, because of uh, how you gave and how it is that you shared and the way that you sold. Uh, we are able to give $2,000 towards the funeral of every person 
who died last week in Baltimore. Come on, y'all got to give God glory for that. Y'all really ain't going to shout about it? That's the kind of God that we serve. I, I want you uh, to know that uh, uh, we, we've got to also uh, take care of home. Uh, we are two weeks away uh, from what it is that we are endeavoring to do uh, to make sure that we are operating as a stellar five-star uh, ministry. Uh, would you give uh, your attention to the screen for just one moment, please, if you'll give your attention to the screen. Benjamin Elijah May said, why run a race just to come in second place? New birth, whatever we're in, we always come first. And this sign is the last of what we used to be. Couple yes. One, two, three, shoot. are exemplary of the spirit of excellence that our church represents and exudes. I can't do it without you. I'm equipped. The old me would have fell apart right here. I'm prepared for opposition. I'm going to try it again because I want to model patience. So please, media ministry, in the spirit of excellence, please. Benjamin Elijah May said, why run a race just to come in second place? New birth, whatever we're in, we always come first. And this sign is the last of what we used to be. A couple of months ago, a driver lost control, ran into this sign, and the LED wall became on the blitz. God gave me a vision, show me a sign. I wanna replace all of the signs that are on our campus so that they are exemplary of the spirit of excellence that our church represents and exudes. I can't do it without your help, without your partnership, or without your buy-in. It's time to enhance the beauty of the signs around the exterior of our campus for the first time in over two decades, reflecting our inner transformation. We invite you to join us in sowing seeds that beautify our church grounds and in return, seek God's direction in your life for the upcoming quarter. With giving tiers from $100 to $5,000, we ask that you pray for guidance on your contribution level. Let's unite on April 21st to raise $250 thousand dollars honoring the land entrusted to us by the Lord together as we give we anticipate the signs and wonders God will reveal in our midst Lord show me a sign that this is it's gonna work out show me a sign I want you to see uh, all of the different tiers uh, for giving those of you who are online uh, our church it is amazing to believe uh, our church is 24 years old 24 years doesn't it look amazing looks absolutely amazing and um, I want to pause uh, because we thank God for our media ministry today, uh, but I rarely do it, but I need to do it more often. Would you help me thank God for those who do janitorial services of our church? For our maintenance workers, for our groundskeepers. Come on, y'all got to do better than that. There, there's no gum under your chair. Amen. Uh, there's no gum under your chair. They are here working tirelessly around the clock. I need you to begin praying about uh, what area you're going to give uh, because I don't want people to walk 
uh, pull up drive onto our campus uh, and they think that we just falling apart. Amen. Uh, the color is uh, discolored. The signs uh, look like they're falling apart. We got to rewrap uh, all of our buses, all of our vans uh, so that we model the uh, excellence of the God that we preach about uh, and that we talk about. In one Sunday, uh, we're going to raise above our tithes and offerings $250,000. Uh, we're going to do it on one Sunday. Come on, clap your hands if you know God is able to do it. I told uh, our, our uh, group that was here for a Bible study on Tuesday, uh, those of y'all that got bottles of uh, jars of coins at home, bring it. Amen. It's just sitting there. The arcade is closed. Ain't nothing you can do with that quarter. And then no more pay phones. Amen. Uh, so I want to relieve you of all of them coins you've been carrying uh, around. Uh, I am mindful that uh, some of us, uh, we got to give it when we got it. We got to give it when we got it. Pastor, if I hold this to the 21st, it may not be here. Amen. I got to give it while I got it. Uh, and so, uh, Deacon, if you'll help me uh, bring a, a basket uh, very carefully, very quickly, uh, as it were. Uh, but uh, those of you who want to give yours on today, uh, we're going to do it collectively, corporately, as a church uh, on the 21st. But those of you, thank you so much, sir. Uh, th those of you who want to sow today, uh, show me a sign that there's going to be a spirit of excellence on every frontier of uh, this campus and of this ministry. Uh, so many schools in this area are coming to do their graduation on our campus uh, and when they come I want them to be able to see uh, that something amazing is uh, going to take place uh, so our male ushers who are moving amongst you uh, they have pledge cards if you are in need of those or envelopes uh, if you have it uh, but those of you who want to give uh, towards our show me a sign campaign and you want to do it today you saying pastor I can't wait till the 21st uh, I want to give it on today or I'm doing it on layaway I'm gonna give me something this Sunday something next Sunday, something on the 21st. Amen. Only you know how your banking is set up. Amen. Uh, but I, I, I need every person to participate. Uh, those of you who are going to share in this campaign, would you move uh, stealthily uh, very quickly so we're able uh, to do that. While you're doing that, uh, because I just stumbled upon it, uh, if I have anybody who's graduating this year, would you stand if you're graduating this year? Yes. Amen. Come on, give them a big cheer. Give them a big cheer. Amen. Okay. Uh, so parents, uh, our deadline for our scholarship applications ends at the end of this month. I uh, ask that you'll go to our uh, uh, New Birth uh, website so that you'll get all of the information uh, that is needed. And that's, uh, thank you, the only one that want to sign. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thanks, you, you just feel bad for me. Thank you so very much. I, I'm appreciative. I'm going to go in absolute confidence uh, that on the 21st, thank you, you done bought two signs. I can tell. Thank you so very much. I want every person uh, on the 21st, I want you to please be a part of what it is that God is calling us to do. On next Sunday is a Baptism Sunday. If you or your children have yet to be baptized, I want you to make sure that you are registered uh, for that uh, for uh, next Sunday. Sunday. I am so uh, grateful uh, to have uh, really not even friends, but their family of mine, uh, Tasha and Corey. Would y'all please stand? I'm honored to have you all uh, hanging with me. Love you all so much. I'm appreciative uh, for you being with us uh, on uh, uh, today. Uh, Brother Richard Oden, would you please stand? Brother Richard Oden, I uh, ask that you please stand. Uh, he came all the way, all the way from Rockdale County. Uh, he's the chairman for Rockdale County. Give God glory for you. Oh, thank you. I'm grateful. Thank you. Be safe. Thank you, Zena, for coming all the way from Baltimore. Thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you. Uh, Kai Oden. Kai Oden, would you please stand? Thank you. Kai Oden uh, is uh, running for clerk of uh, Superior and State Courts. Come on, give God glory. We're honored, honored to have you uh, on uh, this day. Honored to have you on this day. I got other people with badges on. Amen. Stan, help me. Yes, running for Superior Court Judge in Rockdale County. I always want to be nice to the judge. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you so very much. I'm honored. If uh, you are visiting for the first time today, would you please stand? Visiting for the first time. This is your first time in the building. Come on, give God glory. Aren't we glad? We are so on. Come on, New Birth, make some noise for them. Thank you so, so very much. The silver roses, what, what's that mean? Metro South Realtors. Real what? Okay, welcome. Thank you for starting the week off with us. Huh? Yes, all the first time visitors, I need y'all to stand. Go, how y'all sit down that fast? All the first time visitors, stand, stand, stand. Okay. All first time visitors, when you leave, I need you to leave through that door right there. The door I'm pointing to right there. I got a gift for you that I want to give you. Please make sure that, yeah, come, just come now. Just come now. Just come now. New birth, make some noise for our first time visitors. Our first time visitors, thank you so very much. Come on, New Birth, clap your hands, clap your hands. Yes, thank you so very much. Look at all these visitors, I hope y'all come back. This ain't Texas, it's New Birth, thank you. We are glad to have every single one of you uh, on this day. How many of you were blessed by being in worship today? How many of you were blessed? Now, ask that you'll stand to your feet, ask that you'll stand to your feet. On Tuesday, we are continuing in this series on Tuesday. I want you to be intentional over the next four weeks that you're not going to miss a Sunday and you are not going to miss a Tuesday. I need you in worship on Tuesday. Our ushers are waiting for you at every door. We're giving to you invitations. We're giving you invitations. We want you to be intentional to invite two people uh, to worship on next Sunday. And so I want you to please take two of these these invitations take them with you but I want you while it is that you're going to work while you're in target while you're navigating through the streets ask that you will please invite somebody uh, to be a part if you love your church would you give God glory for it now amen right. ask that you all are standing I need y'all to shout for these mothers of the church y'all look good today Lord y'all look good come on white and silver I love it. Thank you so, so very much. Y'all look good. Look at y'all. And they smell good. Come on, Jean Nate. Come on. Everybody is standing. Every white diamond is here. Everybody is standing. Everybody is standing. Repeat after me. Walk with God. And you'll walk with me. Come on, prom date. This is my girl right here. Thank you. Oh, look at my girl dressed today. Isn't that girl gorgeous? My mother called me yesterday and said, don't forget to pick that baby up on the way. Amen. She ain't even listen for me to preach. She just want to see the baby every week. Amen. Everybody repeat after me. Walk with God and he'll walk with me. Talk with God and he'll talk with me. Listen to God and he'll listen to me. Build for God and he'll build for me. Love God because he first loved me. Lift that hand as high as you can. I want to tell you something. Only 80 churches, only 80 churches in the state of Georgia have a ministry for children with special needs. And we are the only one in this county that is a black church that has a ministry for special needs. I want you to give God glory for all of our exceptional children. Yesterday, yesterday was National Autism Day. And uh, it was uh, a day that really warmed our heart. Our children with autism helped give out groceries on yesterday. And I'm telling you, there's some beautiful babies, incredible children. And I'm just grateful for the love of God that is on their life. Lift that hand again. Y'all getting a lot of calisthenics right there. Now unto him who's absolutely able to do anything but fail. May God rest. May God rule. May God equip you. 
May God empower you. May God anoint you to engage with people who are not like you. Henceforth, now and forevermore. And the blessed people of God said, amen. It's getting warm. Come and get your new birth t-shirt. Have a great day in the Lord. <laughs>